Hello, it's Jim Hutchins for the Jerusalem Connection Spot Report for this week. Today we're still in uh, the midst of the Jewish High Holidays. We've uh, had Rosh Hashanah last week, and now coming up this coming Saturday, this coming Shabbat, we have Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. And uh, this is the most holy day of the year for the Jewish people. Uh, it's a day of atonement and repentance, accompanied by fasting and by prayer, fasting some 25 hours. The Talmud, the Talmud states, Yom Kippur atones for those who repent and does not atone for those who do not repent. <clears throat> and repentance in Judaism is done through a process called teshuvah, which means in Hebrew repentance, to turn to God which in its most basic form consists, consists of three things. One, regretting having committed the sin. Two, resolving not to commit the sin in, in the future. And number three, to confess that sin before God. And that, uh, according to the Talmud, is sufficient for atonement. <clears throat> Confession in Judaism is called vidui. And there's a long confession, a short confession, some ten times uh, on the day of uh, uh, on Yom Kippur. People will recite these lists of sins. And uh, confessing them is, uh, we're told, sufficient to gain forgiveness. Unfortunately, the Torah tells us otherwise, that there's something else that, that is needed. <clears throat> The great high priest is on the day of atonement to go into the Holy of Holies in the temple and he's to offer a blood sacrifice for the sins of himself and for the sins of his people. And then comes forgiveness in the sight of God. Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11 says this, For the life of a creature is in the blood, and I have given it to you to make atonement for yourself on the altar. It is for the blood, or it is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. It is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. Unfortunately, <clears throat> uh, the Talmud does not speak of that. But we hear of that and we're taught that in the New Testament in the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 11 says this, But when Messiah... Messiah came as high priest of the good things that are now already here. He went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not made with human hands. That is to say, it's not a part of this creation. He did not enter by means of the blood of goats and calves, but he entered the most holy place once and for all by his own blood and thus obtaining eternal redemption, lasting forever. The blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer sprinkle on those who are ceremonially unclean, sanctify them so that they are outwardly clean. Not inwardly, but outwardly clean. How much more then the blood of the Messiah, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from the acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God. In fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. But with the shedding of blood of our Messiah, our Jesus, there is forgiveness, eternal forgiveness, past, present, and future. That's good news. That's good, good news. Till next week, Od Ki Yavoshilo, till Messiah comes, Chag Sameach, have a happy, happy Yom Kippur.